Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald in Bushnell at the corner of Maine and Hearst, where for many, many years there was a clothing store on this corner. But in Bushnell, like in many small towns in central Illinois, the retail market changed, that business went out, and it was vacant for some time. Well, this old building has been many things since it was built in the 1800s. It's been a bank, it's been, uh, it's been the clothing business, and, and some businesses we're not aware of. But it looks like in about two years, it's going to have a new life. It's just going to be very, very difficult, I think, bringing that new life to birth. Mark Rauschert, you're native Bushnellian, I guess. Is that yep. the way it's? Okay, yep. Bushnellian. When you see buildings like this just deteriorate, it kind of breaks your heart. Man. It does. Um, my, uh, my day job is in an older building, and we've done a lot to take care of it over the years. And this one became available last fall. The clothing store that had been in it for 30 years was finally closing their doors, just changes in the market. Mm -hmm. And I felt like, uh, since I'm kind of a fool when it comes to fixing up old <laughs> things, this would be a good project for oh, me. man. And it's interesting because as we go through this building, we're going to find some of the things that you're experiencing. Every time you work in here, every day you find something unexpected, something old and new, and, and you say to yourself, what is that doing there? Was that there originally? Did somebody yeah. add that? You're finding stuff all the time, aren't you? Yeah, it's, um, there are a lot of stories hidden in the building, and if we take our time, in some cases, they reveal themselves. Some of them still are open questions, and I'm sure there are lots of surprises left for us. Hopefully all good ones. We've had a few bad yeah. surprises. Well, it's one of the really preeminent buildings on the square here. And, and as, you, as we look at it from this side, it appears to be two buildings side by side. Is, is that the way it was built? Yeah, as far as we can tell, what you're seeing here, these, the two halves were operated as separate businesses until about 1990. As you go back along the street and see that first open arch, we don't really know when that was a separate business or if it was. The one with the two canopies on it, that was a separate business. Uh -huh. I know in the 70s and possibly even in the 60s that was a woman's hair salon. I, I have memories of going in there uh, with my mom as a kid and cigarette smoke and big hair and the big um, <laughs> sure. crazy Jetson-like caps yeah. <laughs> that the ladies were wearing. Um, Anyway, that over a period of years all consolidated into one business. Uh -huh. And uh, the people I bought it from said they had a pretty booming business until the, uh, the crisis of 08-09. Yeah. And then uh, the retail market started to run out on them. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's about 8,000 square feet. Yep, 4,000 a floor. 4,000 per floor. And you yeah. were able to purchase it for how much? $1,000. A thousand dollars. Yeah, we had to pay the one-year taxes mm -hmm. and the closing, yeah. but um, the uh, the sellers just knew there wasn't a ready market for it, and uh, I, I told them what my plans were insofar as restoration goes, yeah. and um, interesting thing, when we were taking off the front sign before that said something special, this is about three weeks ago, I called the previous owners and I said, would you like part of the sign or would you like the mm -hmm. sign, and they hadn't come back to the building yet, and I, I'd invited them when I'd be in here on a yeah. Saturday, I'd be like, come on in and see it. Well, they came in and they pried one letter off of it. And then the next day they came back in and the husband said he wanted to start helping. So he's my main oh, carpenter right terrific. now. Yeah, it's Actually, great. You have a lot of people like that. Some of them are donating their time. Some that's, of them you pay. That's right. But you've got dozens of people helping you on this project, which yeah. is really neat. Yeah. My wife yeah. and I have got a little list at home and when somebody new joins us, I think we've had 40 different people help us so that's far. That's remarkable. Yeah. Well, listen, let's go in and take a look and see what you're dealing with here, okay? Okay. Well, welcome to Something Special, Mark. Was that Something the name of the special, clothing yep. store? Okay, Absolutely. for all those years. Um, the first thing you see when you come in here is they left, they left something behind, didn't they? They left some of the, ooh, wow. They left some of the uh, display cases behind, I guess, huh? They did. Those were actually in a side room, and we thought to get them out, we were going to have to knock them down. And it turns out that the little door that we thought uh, we were going to have to break them out, break them down to get through, was actually hidden inside of a big arch. 
So you were able to move them. You do, okay, and that's really nice, high quality yeah. wood. You don't want to have to oh. knock that all apart. No, it's, it's great. We're not sure what we're going to do. We built little rollers to put them on so we could move them around during you construction. You know, somehow, your, your plan is to have a, a restaurant and a bar. Somehow, yep. this is going to fit into the bar, or it'll be a pantry of some kind where we you hope. keep dishes and yeah. plates and stuff. We think it'd be appropriate to keep it here. I think so, too. I think so, too. Okay, and, and this, of course, would have been, this is kind of a shotgun style, this half of the building goes back, but this was full of clothing for... Yeah, oh, mostly, was it women? Women's clothes? Women's clothing, yeah. Mm -hmm. Had paneling and, and uh, clothes rods, had a drop ceiling, lots of display cases. Where the wood studs are now, that was um, a couple feet either side of that was a dividing wall with mm -hmm. some changing rooms on the left. And, you, and you've put that in there because the plan is to have that sectioned off as the bathroom area. Is that yes, right? Yes, that's where we're putting the bathrooms. Okay, and there used to be a stairway. There goes the civil defense siren. There used to be a stairway there from... Uh, all the way up to the second floor, right? Yep. Okay, and that's yep. gone now because you have a different stairway that you're using. Yep, we're actually gonna put another stairway back in there, but mm -hmm. we had to change it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's go over to this side because this is the side that you've done a little, a little more uh, finish work on, I think. And what you, what you found in here, th they had put a drop ceiling in, right? Yep, very low drop ceiling um, on a nice uh, wood system, and as they put it in, what they did is they went into the metal ceiling and they just cut into it and they bent a panel down and they put their support, nailed it to the wood joist exposed. And so um, the, when, we, when we bought the building, the people that we bought it from said, there's, we think there's a metal ceiling up there, but uh -huh. we've never really looked at it. And it was a bit like walking into, uh, I don't know. It's really a, attractive. It's a beautiful yeah. pattern. Yeah. It's a beautiful pattern. I would say, so you, you painted it or primed it. I mean, you've, you've yep, we've it. primed it. We put a lot of caulking into it uh -huh. and probably uh, an eighth of it has been totally rebuilt. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Sections of it were missing. And what happened was, was that this, this type of paneling right here was mm -hmm. all along this wall and it was rusted as that one is. Mm -hmm. And as we took that off, we found then that there were two layers of wallpaper behind that. Uh -huh. And from what I've been able to gather, the, the metal was popular in the 1880s, 1890s. Mm -hmm. So we've got two layers of wallpaper behind that that predates it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I collected that. I didn't throw, didn't throw it away. Well, and that's good because some expert will be able to tell you where that wallpaper came from and, and about the approximate date of it. Yeah, that's a, that's they a great will. idea. They'll be able to do that. Now, we talked about the drop ceiling. Yeah. You can see you can see what they what they did here. They were attempting to get plumbing upstairs, I guess, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Had a lot of people offer to take out the copper piping for me. <laughs> I'll bet you did. You can see we actually polished one section of it uh -huh. and uh, again this will be the bar and we're our plan is to leave that exposed and to polish it up after we put on the finished paint on the ceiling. Uh-huh. But this whole section here has been rebuilt from the wall that was here. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm you love brickwork. Yeah, and and I you do. know you know how to do brick work. I mean, you know how to how to bring it back, um, and you got no shortage of that in this building. There's all kinds of brick work. In fact, there's arches that you have found that you didn't even know were here. They were covered up yeah. with lathe and plaster and all that. Yeah. They? Yep. We found three arches so far. Maybe a fourth one. Oh, and we get to see those, right? Yeah. Uh, three of them. Yeah. It's interesting. You know, the, you don't know what story they're telling you, but they're telling you a story. At some point, somebody wanted to 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 use that room a different way. Yeah. You get there a different way. It's been through a lot of changes. At each, at each step of what we've been doing, I explained to the people who are helping me that hopefully we will not be the last group of people who modify this building. Yeah. But it's, it's a tough challenge for mm -hmm. us in a small community. Yeah, it's 8,000 square feet, right? Yep. And at one time there may have been as many as six, seven businesses in here in that 8,000 square feet. Yeah, that's right. Well, Mark, we were talking about the archways that you find. You found, did you say four? Three for sure, Three for and sure. a fourth one I, I started uncovering, and it was either a big window, an arch, and I thought, i got to cover this before my daughter finds you know, it. I, I don't know if people can imagine what that would be like, though. You're in here in this, in this dusty, old place that hasn't seen human life for a long time, and you start removing stuff from the walls, and, and, and this just reveals itself, and you go, my, my goodness, it's a whole yeah. different building. Yeah than I thought it was. Yeah, this room's gone through a lot of change. It was dark before. The, the natural light we've got now is all boarded over. Mm -hmm. Now, in your vision, what would this room be used for? A uh, smaller dining room. Okay, like a, a private banquet room or something yep. like that. You could yep. probably seat 20 people or exactly. something. Exactly. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Now, okay, this doesn't just happen. Uh, look at this side of the arch. 
and you can see what miserable condition this is in, right? You've got a yep. lot of work to do here. And then look at this side, which you've already done. How did you, how did you do this? So the goal is, is to first stabilize it to make sure it's structurally sound. And mm -hmm. then since it's a visible part, how do we dress it up? I mean, th this whole thing was a surprise. This was a standard doorway here. Mm -hmm. We used to refer to this as the private dining room. We're a long way from it being anything, mm -hmm. but now it's just the smaller dining room because we didn't realize this whole arch was here. Those antiques we looked at, we were stuck yeah. in here. So we thought until we were able to uncover the, yeah. uh, the arch here. My daughter, Anne, was the one who found this. You could just see maybe a half an inch of that arch starting from the outside when we were tearing the paneling off in this yeah. other room because there was a wall right here that came like this. Uh -huh. I just assumed that it's where the two old buildings came together. Yeah. And so it was almost like we were in a feeding frenzy. We went to pull off this panel and then we ran to the other side of this chimney, found that there wasn't an arch yeah. there. We came in here, started demolishing this room. So the, a lot of the project's been like that. We have a plan and then something happens either there's a, a, yep. a leak we find, yep. or a bad wall, a plan, or a new discovery, building, and there we, go. Plan. Yep, there we go. Look over here. This is, this is fascinating. What you're doing is you're putting a puzzle together. You have to knock these little, you know, little, okay, a piece of brick that thin, for instance. You need that in some cases, or that, because it's so irregular. The amount of repair work you have to do yep. is so irregular. You need all different sizes. So you knock around and you get it the right size and you yep. mortar it up there. Sometimes with the hammer, sometimes with the saw. But it, it allows us to put a, a finished look on mm -hmm. something that was otherwise yeah. in pretty rough shape. You, you mentioned your daughter, Anne. Um, and she's done a lot of work on, on this project with you. Yep. We're going to meet her next. Yep. Anne, can we interrupt you for a minute? Yes. I noticed a lot of that. Now, is that old plaster, that dusty stuff that we see coming out of there? Yes, that's horsehair plaster. And it used to cover this entire wall. And there were a couple of cracks. And I said, you know, Dad, I think this would look really cool exposed. And so we battled for a while. <laughs> and then we were eventually, I just, we just knocked it all off. And then yep. there was so much plaster stuck in between here. So we've just slowly grouted it out and now I'm just doing the fine work so yeah and you can see over here this is this is more finished than what you've done there it's smooth it's not dusty and, and you don't have the that junk in, in the cracks right yeah. right yeah and so eventually I think we will paint all of it and then we'll leave the the cracks painted and then on top we'll sand it down so it looks like wood mm -hmm. again mm -hmm. and this will be one wall of the private dining room yes okay. this will be one wall and then we have a little bit of a surface on the ceiling that we think we could put candlelights in which is unique because there's no other ceiling yeah. area like that. How, how many? How long have you been working on this project? Oh, um, November. Since November. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you you go to University of Wisconsin and you get your art degree and the first thing you do is get, is get into a 150 <laughs> year old building, right? And start right. knocking out plaster. Yeah. So in the mornings I do part time graphic design and then in the afternoons I just come down here and get dusty and then get dusty. Yeah. Out. Eventually I would love to help with the photography on the walls and yeah, whatnot. But, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, your dad credited you with having found that arch that we were yes, just looking at. it's a beautiful arch. And you also found some other, some other interesting things. In fact, the, the one I'm most interested in is upstairs. Yeah. Because when you were working up there, and, and you love to tear things apart, I oh, assume, yes. because you, you seem to have, yeah, you love demolition. <laughs> yeah. Um, you, you actually found a room that nobody had probably even been in for over 30 yes. years. Nobody even knew it existed. Yes. Can you go up there and show yes, it? Yes, let's, let's go, go check it out. Well, and on our way upstairs, I, I, I'm reminded now that the, the stairs I'm on for like 30 years, yeah. nobody had trod these steps. Yeah. Nobody even knew they were here. Yeah, we could we could barely see them. There wasn't very good light because this was covered. These doors were boarded up. So you could see that there was stairway, but you didn't know what condition it was in. You didn't see this beautiful old railing. You could see it from the from the upstairs from the because top. the stairway, yeah. the old stairway, was still there, yeah. and it's gone now. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. you tore that out it. because you didn't need it. Yeah. And just to give people an idea, you said when you started that lathe wall down there and yes. knocking all that old plaster, that's what this looked like. Yeah, huh? so you can see the horsehair sticking out. I do see it. And so there was a layer over this, and then once you knock that plaster off, mm -hmm. then this is what was behind it. So we've had to go in, scrape it, kind of get it with a wire brush, and so you can see they've kind of started to do it. Yeah, here. and I tell you, I can see what your next project is going to be. <laughs> Since you're so talented at this, this is going to be your Another workplace workout. for a while. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Okay, on our way out, let's go. All right. 
Yeah, and what you could get upstairs before, but you had to take the stairways that are in the uh, pit that we're looking at right now. The stairways yeah. came up, yeah. and you all made a conscious decision to, to move those and get rid of those. Mm -hmm. How come? Well, the stairway was in great shape, but in order to fit bathrooms downstairs that follow ADA regulations that don't take up too much room, mm -hmm. we figured it would be best to move the staircase back and have it come out in the aisle oh, way that heads back to the kitchen. So mm -hmm. it just made sense to kind of yeah. tear it out and build a new one anyways. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Good deal. Now let's head back. Oh, we were talking about arches too. Oh yeah, here's another <laughs> there, arch. You, you, you start, okay, you start tearing away. There's a doorway here. Yep. You tear the doorway out and you find out that that somebody at some point had formed an arch yeah. here. You don't know who or why? No, we have no idea. It's, it's, it's interesting. As we do demolition, it's like the building is trying to tell us its story layer yeah. by layer. Yeah. yeah, wouldn't it be nice if it could talk? Yeah, if it could it's talk or if people best. could come forward. It's then, doing its best. Yeah, maybe somebody will, will know that answer yeah. to that. So another crazy story is we knew that there was a building somewhere, a room in this building that hadn't been opened. And I told my dad, I said, Dad, I know it's behind this wall. And he said, no, it's not. And so I was in here scraping off wallpaper. <laughs> and there was a little bit of plaster that was okay, chipped away. Okay, and this away. is the wallpaper, right? Is this the wallpaper yeah, that you're Yeah, this is old wallpaper. Well, it is. Yeah. It really so, and there's a couple layers, as you can see. Mm -hmm. So there was a little bit of plaster exposed. And so I saw that there was brick behind it. So I said, okay, like, the obvi it's obviously not opened right there. And then I got to this lath section. Mm -hmm. And if you come around, you can see it looked like this. Mm -hmm. And there were a couple of boards that were broken, and we could see into there. So we stuck our cell phones in there. We took pictures. <laughs> took a picture. And we said, it's the room. It's the hidden room. So we've since broken it open. Uh-huh. <laughs> and here you have the graffiti room, which has the chalkboards, graffiti room. The, the, bird This nests. gang or, or, or group, the blue flames, had been in here at some point. Yeah. Um, but this was completely closed off. Oh, yeah. Somebody would have had to get in here from the alley or, yeah, or some other way. Yeah, so there's kind of like a small alleyway between these two buildings. Yeah. And we're on the second story, so someone must have, someone was living out here at one point. They yeah. had climbed up and lived in here. And then they found them, kicked them out, and then resealed it up. Mm -hmm. But we mm -hmm. said, we're going to make use of this. And so we actually built a stairway up to the roof. Because the roof, you can see the whole downtown. And, from. I mean, that, there's a practical reason for that. Not because you want to spend time on the roof, but if you got to do work up there. Right, exactly. Up there. Oh, yeah, exactly. Because Your dad doesn't like ladders. No, no, we do not <laughs> like ladders. And but. you can tell he had to remove all that yeah. just, to get, just to get to the seat. He had to yeah. remove all that lathe. Yeah. Wow. So a room, nobody, a stairway and a room, nobody had been in for 30 years. No That's fascinating. Been in. Yeah, yeah. And so... Um, we don't know what the plans are for this room, are, mm -hmm. but it's uh, got a lot of history on it. Yeah. Well, yeah. this could, this with those two other rooms, could make a nice apartment area. I guess you could. Yes, you could have we. Room. That's my dream, yeah. <laughs> the art yeah. major's dream. Yeah. But um, we'll see what actually happens. You can see old wallpaper just comes off so easily. Cindy, we're standing in in what's going to be the kitchen yes. of this new bar and restaurant, which doesn't have a name yet. I take it. Right. There's no name. There's no name. Although people have suggested. Things, Lots of right? ideas. Okay. All right. Maybe we'll talk about that. But first, um, you weren't totally on board with the restaurant bar idea, were you? No. No. Have you changed your mind? Well, yes, <laughs> but <laughs> we're busy people. I just didn't know how we could tackle this large of a project. Well, the, I think the idea is to restore the place and then to lease it to a restaurateur, yes. right? Yes. And I, I was doing. much more in favor of that. We're yeah. not restaurant people so <laughs> I heard um, earlier today that that there was a, a there was a fam or a, a, a locally owned restaurant where a lot of people in Bushnell met yes and it recently closed and so yeah. that sort of resource isn't here anymore. yeah it's a, it, you know in a small town it's nice to have a place where people can gather you can have a banquet you can have a uh, lots of class reunions met at the place mm -hmm. that closed so yeah we really are missing that and we need that here yeah, yeah a place a place where, and, a, and this is going to be a big restaurant, I think your husband said 250 people pro possibly could be in here at one time. So that would cover almost any function that Bushnell yeah. might have. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that would be tight. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what's your favorite name, would be name for this place? Well, my favorite <laughs> name right now is Tellers. Tellers. Because the, the corner um, building was originally a bank. Right, right. And um, because that is going to be a gathering spot mm -hmm. and tellers is kind of a social has social connotations mm -hmm. that's one of my favorites yeah. another name that's being thrown around is nell's because of being located in bushnell 
So I don't know. We yeah. we have we'd like to keep some of the integrity of the old mm -hmm. while making it a completely up to date facility. Mm -hmm. And you know I've noticed that uh, you you're, you've got really beautiful exposed brick in here, and that's not a problem for a kitchen. You've already checked it out, right? Yeah, you. We just need to make sure that it's sealed in a kitchen. Every surface, every crack has to be yeah, they're sealed. Very, very careful yeah, about and and we want to make sure we comply with all the yeah. regulations. Well, good luck. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, this was another one of the, the uh, secret rooms you found, right? In the commode room here? Yeah, that's in right. Room, yeah. In the sink room. And, and, and nobody, I guess, had been up there since the 1930s because there was stuff hidden up there, wasn't there? That's right. <laughs> um, the guy I bought the building from said that uh, the summer of uh, 15, a potential buyer for the building came in here and looked at the door where you're standing and said, what's in here? And the owner's like, I don't know. So they opened it up and then this was uh, closed and the yeah. guy said, well, what's back in there? He came in here, stood up on here and right above this ceiling were the general ledgers and accounts receivable from the bank that went from under the here. the bank that was yeah. here. In 34 during the depression. And it went under in 34 and somebody went to a lot of trouble to hide those records because they were That's obviously right. put there so nobody would ever see them again. That's right. But you ha you saw them again. <laughs> That's right. No, we did. We, we've looked at them. They're very interesting. Yeah, well, come on down and show us here. I hate to see it. It's so hot. I hate to see you up there like that. But when you close that door behind you, we'll be able to see just how different, difficult it would be to, to find. And of course, no, you didn't even know the sink room was there, right? That That's was, right. That was a surprise, too. That's right. Oh, man. So this is what you all you came away with. One, two, three, four, big book of bank records. This, this is uh, I, I, Bank of Bushnell. Yeah, the Bank of Bushnell. Yeah. From what we can tell that the bank was started in 17 and went under in 34. Mm -hmm. This is, I'm not a banker, so I'm sure the bankers watching will know what that is right away. Oh man, uh, and so many banks went under, of course. Um, that is going to be a lot of fun for a local historian to look through. Absolutely. You also have, you know, bills, bills receivable. This was yep. part of the bank records as well. They would hand ledger. Every time somebody came in to make a loan payment, they would hand, right. hand come. This is a, and this was a journal from one of the local businesses that was yeah in this from building. the clothing store that was here in the '60s. Yeah. And they of course entered everything by hand too. So what yeah. you really do have some valuable information for someone who would have some memory or knowledge about what, what was That's going right. on here. And all through this building, you found, I guess you call them antiques. Yeah, they're just mementos. They're things that people didn't 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 take when they left. Yep. Take us in there. We'll just take a kind of a quick look at if some, sure. of, some of the items that you recovered. I've been challenged to disposition the uh, vacuum cleaners lately. <laughs> but uh, my favorite, a um, uh, Partridge Family Christmas special eight-track tape. Point that out to us. Uh, well, the eight-track player's right here. I'm okay. not sure where the eight-track tapes are. But you found the tape. Huh? Yep, old um, ashtray, a cash drawer, what it looks like a hand printing machine. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Would like to know what that is. There's all kinds of typeset in the drawer. This item here we found with the Benevolence Society books upstairs, and we're not sure what that is. No one's oh put goodness. forth any ideas for it. looks like for a hazing yet. tool of some kind. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Some old dolls. Oh, there are the eight track tapes. Yeah. yeah. Dolls, um, telephones. Yep, some Illinois plates celebrating one of Illinois' anniversaries. Uh, the sesquicentennial, so 1868 in uh -huh. the plates. I'll be darned. That's valuable, I assume. Yeah. I don't know. That's neat. That's neat. We're keeping it in the room that's um, in best shape here. Yeah. So. Yeah, it stays dry here, doesn't it? Yep. Yeah. Some of the things we don't know what they are yet. We just haven't had a chance to look at them. Yeah. Fascinating. Well, Mark, when we were in that room with with Anne, we were talking about these steps. You, uh, you and your crew built these just so you could get out on the roof, right? That's right. Yeah, not a big fan of ladders. And I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Boy, it's bright out here. Man. Okay, so this roof looks to me, and I don't know much about roofs, but it looks like it's in good shape to me. Well, it's, uh, it's got some leaks. I've become a little jaded. If I can't shower and the water coming through, I really don't consider it a leak anymore. <laughs> it's not a real leak, right? Yeah. Okay, but so you do have some of those problem areas. We still do, yep. You've been up here, though. You've been up here and done some repair work. 
A uh, little bit. Um, had a guy take care of some of the roof. I've uh, trained a few tuck pointers on the chimney. We've uh, had to tack down the roofing in a few areas. It's In restoration, it's kind of like, am I going to save the building? Is it beyond saving? So we started with the foundation. It doesn't do any good to fix the roof if the foundation is giving out. So right. we are kind of working from the ground up. Yeah, yeah. Um, you got you, you gotta have a foundation, you gotta have a roof where everything just rots in between. Yep. But let's go over and look at this chimney because this is kind of fascinating. This, we saw the uh, beginning of this chimney was in the, in the basement, which we're not gonna get a chance to see here today. But, but this goes all the way from the basement through the first and second floor and out here, yep. and it looks like it was falling apart. In sections it was, there are a couple areas where it's cracked. Um, you can still see up here, you can actually see through the brick, there's nothing else. And really what we do is we train people up here and if we've got a little extra mortar to get rid of, since it's not really a visible area. And, and why, what is this material that we're standing on? Um, this is five or six layers of old roofing material. I'm not really a roofing expert. Yeah, What's, what makes it and silver I hope, I hope though? I is I it silver paint? I'm, yeah, it's like an aluminum based paint on, on parts of it. Uh -huh. Let's walk to the front and get a view of Bushnell from here. You can see where some of the old skylights are. You know, and that was another question I had. I, it seemed like when I was down there on the second floor, I'd look, everywhere I'd look up there was a skylight, but they were all covered. Yeah. What was the reason for that? Must have been leaks. I think um, part of it's been a, in an attempt to reduce the utility bills in the winter time. Yeah. I'd like to restore them. It's all a question of oh, time and I, money, right? Do you know what's under there? I mean, have you looked at, is uh, there any no, glass not, at all? No, not beyond this. My guess is that the glass was taken off. If you look over here, you can see where there was an alley between the two buildings. That w There is glass under that. You can see it if you look up underneath. Uh -huh. And it's been roofed over at some point in time. So my guess is this probably had a similar glass. It came up as a peak, and if we looked off to the north around this building, which is the old opera house, you can see some of the glass on some of the other buildings yeah. it hasn't been taken off this this has probably been removed though the glass is probably yeah, been i think removed. so that's yeah. a, that's a shame it'd be wouldn't it, wouldn't it be great if it was there yeah there, these older buildings one there. they did a great job of capturing natural airflow and natural yeah. light they had to i mean they they didn't have the, the kind of light that we have now and they had no air conditioning of course so no. okay and so here we are looking at bushnell um it's interesting when you look at Bushnell, you're a manufacturer yourself, right? You're in yep. a manufacturing business. Yep. And there are several, the, the hammer, the Bushnell, the, the, the hammer factory is still here. Your, your uh, manufacturing plant is here. So there is some of that still going on. Yeah, there are four metalworking companies here and a couple of food processors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and it looks like there's going to be another bar and restaurant at some point. Now. We hope so. Okay. Listen, I want to thank you and your family. Um, thank you. The ladies in your life are delightful. They are. You know, they're and, and, ha and hardworking, I think, too. They are. Yeah, especially Anne. Boy, she really goes after it, doesn't she? Yep. Thanks for showing us the building, and good luck. Thank you. Yeah. Here on, uh, I think it's East Main in Bushnell, uh, this building's going to come back to life, and there may be another bar and restaurant within about two years. With another Illinois Story in Bushnell, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching. Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. For a DVD copy of the program you've just seen, send 1995 to Network Knowledge, P.O. Box 6248, Springfield, Illinois 62708. Be sure to include the program name, subject, and when the program aired. You can also order with your credit card by calling 800-232-3605.